The goal of today's video is to make our API more robust. I'll make it more robust by restricting from where my API accepts requests and how many requests it will accept within a time frame and from one IP address. So I'll implement IP rate limiting and talk about restricting cross-origin resource sharing course and I'll restrict the allowed hosts. After installing that package, we can add the following lines. Configuring the rate limit options uh, with our own configuration coming from the app settings. We'll add those later, then add some in-memory stuff to do in-memory rate limiting. And at this configuration coming from the package ASP.NET Core rate limit. And then all there is left to do is to use that middleware, use IP rate limiting. And then of course the app settings. And it will give us a 429 when we hit, when we try to do more requests that is allowed. This IP whitelisting is important because if you want to test this locally, you'll want to leave that out. That was basically allow whitelisting our local host IPv4 address. So one, yeah, zero, 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 or one, 27001 and then the IPv6 was the other one and you could whitelist some endpoints as well because this is now applicable to the whole API and then the general rules is the most important for us that's going to limit the amount of requests that will allow in certain certain period coming from one IP address so it's IP rate limiting so uh, basically saying one page visitor can only do so many requests within this period but there's also other rules with a, a larger period and if one one of these are hit then it's also going to count towards yeah, the, the other ones. So that's where, where this stacked blocked requests is for. We'll see that when uh, trying it out. You'll have to calculate how many requests you expect per period. Of, of course, you need to be aware of if one button click in your application triggers three requests then you'll have to calculate that in of course that's why i'm picking a bit more than than just uh, 10 or 5. anyway let's try that out just going to put this on five uh, wait let's see let's just remove one zero like that give it a good rerun it 47 ah and we s we've hit maximum admitted is 20 requests for 30 seconds so we hit it and then maximum admitted is 25 per one minute and then 50 per five minutes so we exceeded all of them we also exceeded the three requests for one second, but that one reset because it's only applicable for one second. And then we hit the next one for 30 seconds and that's gonna stay uh, exceeded for that 30 seconds and then reset and so on. And then the one minute and then the five minutes. So now we have to wait five minutes to try again. So that's for that's, and that's only for my IP address, of course. So that's basically how it works. Then the next thing would be cross-origin resource sharing, which I already set 
but only for the development environment. So I'm allowing resource sharing to any origin with and, and that does any method. So get, put, delete, post, whatever, with any header. So you could restrict that however you like. So, and then I would say else, and then have a more uh, more restricted uh, configuration for the production environment. And what basically happens, so an origin, so this is only going to look at the origin, which is a header typically set by a browser. So if uh, someone requests something from your API using a browser that will send an origin header with the the origin will then be set to the yeah domain if I'm not mistaken from which the request originates so that is set and based on that this this middleware can allow or disallow that request but setting that that's typically only blocking requests from browsers since browsers will set that origin header but then still someone in his or her basement can write a script run that locally uh, that calls your api and the course restriction will do nothing because those requests will not have that origin header but those requests should have a host header so th the, there's a difference between an origin and a host header and that's where this allowed hosts uh, middleware will kick in we'll want to restrict both of course so i'm going to add a custom section this is you can choose the name of this key that's going to specify the allowed origins and that should contain the origin so the domain where I expect and want to allow requests from. So when I deploy this API and let's say I deploy the API to one domain and I deploy the front end to another domain, I'll want to include the domain of the front end to allow requests from that domain, which is not the same domain as the one that the API lives in. So it's cross origin resource sharing. If, if both the API and the front end were hosted on the same domain, that uh, uh, course would not be applicable since we're not crossing anything. We're doing same origin requests at that time, same domain requests, and probably same host requests as well. You could of course also specify the allowed methods and headers um, similarly. And then in here I want to add that configuration. So we're getting the course config from the app settings and the allowed course origins. And then we'll, so this is for the production environment, not the development one. Then we'll specify that we'll want to allow requests from these origins, so in the app settings, and then any method, any header. So it's similarly as that, only that we changed the any origin to a restricted set of origins. So if we run that locally, everything will still work, of course, because we have this development configuration. If I were to deploy that now online, I would get course errors because I haven't specified the correct domain yet. So when uh, when it's live, so when my API and my frontend are deployed, or at least my frontend first maybe, then I'll want to paste in the domain name of the frontend. So now we'll go, we're going to take a look at the allowed hosts since, like I mentioned, even if this course configuration restricts requests from certain origins or from 
all origins except for the ones I allowed. I can still just uh, open up Postman and start spamming my API. I'm only interested in the headers for now, so we'll see this host. But we don't see an origin header in here, so the course middleware would be unable to block based on that header since there is none. So that's where this allowed host kicks in. And also in here, I'll have to specify the domains I uh, expect requests from. Domain specific, so subdomains are not the same. So if I say maps.google.com can call my API, that would be different than then I'd say google.com can do it. You can also specify wildcard, so that would then be maps and maybe drive.google.com and so on. And if you want to specify multiple, then you could say, just going to say something, maps.apple.com, for example, and you can just separate them with a semicolon. So I'm just going to set it to yourlivedomain.com and I'll replace that once my frontend is online. So this is what happens when you specify a host. So restrict the allowed hosts to a certain domain. If I then try to call my API on any endpoint, it's the middleware is going to kick in and display a 400 uh, page. This is a basic HTML page that the middleware created. So I touched upon IP rate limiting, so to restrict the amount of requests. And then I showed you how to restrict the cross origin resource sharing, so the course, to restrict from which origins you want requests and also from which hosts you want to accept requests. So I think I'm ready to deploy, maybe after applying my brand styling to the brand website. If you don't want to miss the videos about deploying the API and the frontend to Azure, make sure to subscribe and leave a like if you're ready for the deployment and for .NET 8, which will be coming soon to our project. See you in the next one.